This is one of the best things I've ever made. You guys! And then you just add a little bow. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello there. Today I am feeling tired, which means that I want to create some selfish content. Me time. That's what's happening here today. I have recently fallen down some sculpting rabbit holes on YouTube and some one-of-a-kind art doll creators like KP Creations. I just so happen to be someone who used to make art dolls and stuff like that in high school. And I really friggin' miss it. I don't know why I ever stopped. Art dolls are really, really cool, and I definitely want to get back into making those. But since they involve sewing and my little fingers frankly need a break from last week, I'm just gonna restart my sculpting journey by making some whimsical little friends. I'm talking taking a frog, putting a little cape on the frog, a little fawn wearing platform boots, cats but wearing little suits of armor. The creativity is really in the palm of my hand, right next to a little pile of oven-baked clay. Start us off, I want to do a little bit of googling and pinteresting to figure out exactly what I want to make. And then I also asked people on my Instagram if they had any ideas of what I should make for this video, so let's go through those suggestions, see if we can find anything enticing. All right, so I think that this sort of thing is the kind of stuff that I'm vibing with for these sculptures this week. Basically, just take the concept of some foresty creature that I like or a fantasy creature that I like and pair it with a different fantasy archetype. Give them little outfits, weapons. <laughs> like, this is a prime example of the kind of whimsy that I am looking to create this week. I also rather like this bookish cat. Also, this little owl with a cloak on and a giant knife. <laughs> All of these cute images of mice are giving me huge red wall vibes. Who out there watched a lot of red wall as a kid and it potentially may have shaped your entire personality? <laughs> I'm not self-reporting, I'm just, you know, asking for a friend. I feel like it's not going to be difficult to come up with ideas. I think it's going to be difficult to narrow down those ideas. I've already seen so many responses on Instagram, so <laughs> let's see what chaos you guys have to throw my way. A hippogriff? A werewolf bard in a corset. A kraken. I like the way you guys think. <laughs> a little mushroom man. Oh, you mean, you mean what I think you mean? Fog? Bear? Obligatory moth. Centaur, but centipede. Centarpede. Mushroom goose. Goose. Mushroom cow. Dragons. Frogs. A giant frog. Fantasy cowboy snake. Look up the hazel worm. What is this? Oh no. Oh, it's a long cat. A mouse with a monocle. Angry duck. Is there any other kind of duck? Possum mage. I actually really dig that. I don't know why that seems right, but can you guys agree with me? That seems right. Possum would harness the dark arts if they could. Anything to get that bag of Cheetos out of your garbage. Dapper Victorian duck or frog. And finally, bread but magical. Oh dear viewer, I already happen to think that bread is pretty magical. Mm, do you guys feel that? Do you guys feel that? <sighs> it's inspiration. All right, so you guys have given me some very good ideas. I think that I'm going to let these marinate for a day or so, and then I think I'm gonna go to the drawing board and come up with some actual little sketches of what I wanna make so that I'm not just going in directionless and blind. Let's cook. So for starters, I saw a couple of suggestions for either a Luna bunny or a moth bunny. So since a lot of you just wanted me to put wings on animals, I decided to design a Luna moth bunny. I think the celestial themes and light colors are so cute and the fuzziness of a moth is the perfect thing to pair with a bunny. Next up, I personally couldn't resist doing a little fox. I was obsessed with foxes as a young teen, so I figured I owed it to my younger art doll obsessed self now that I'm more skilled. But I wanted to add a whimsical twist and several people suggested either a nine-tailed fox or a fox witch, so I thought, why not both? I also couldn't resist all of the frog suggestions, especially the dapper Victorian frog, so that's exactly what I designed, complete with a little lantern, and I'm sure that some of you already know what that means. And last, but certainly not least, I had to do a magpie. We call lovers of shiny things here on the channel magpie brain people, and even though it's probably a myth that magpies like treasure, I had to do an ode to my esteemed viewers and patrons. Thus, I decided to do a magpie rogue that's out to steal some shiny stuff and kind of looks like a bird version of Carmen Sandiego. All right, we have our designs, and just the right dose of impulsive overconfidence, so let's get started. 
Hello folks. So today I'm basically just gonna focus on the armature, which for the uninitiated, the armature is basically the skeleton underneath your sculpture meat bag. For my armatures, I'm just gonna be using run of the mill materials. I have some uh, armature wire and different gauges, aluminum foil, wire cutters, and of course electrical tape so that I don't burn down my house. I've also purchased an assortment of log pieces to add another unnecessary layer of challenge for this because it is simply me. Probably saw in my designs. I also wanna add some LEDs to this project. Project. And as you can probably guess, you should not be putting LEDs in your oven. This is gonna be a little bit of a risk, but it's mostly going to be just trust the process because I really want these to be a little bit more magical and have some little lanterns and maybe glowing gemstones or something like that. Anyways, there is no time to beat around the bush. There are critters that need to be birthed. So let's get started. <laughs> The armatures are done. Let's get sculpting. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, huh, now sculpting little friends sounds like a fun activity, but I don't know how to sculpt little friends. Well, look no further than this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the world's largest online learning community for creatives, and they offer classes in a wide variety of topics like illustration, graphic design, animation, music production, film and video, social media, and literally so many more. I mean, look at this giant list. And yes, that includes sculpting. If you want to get into sculpting and get a really good overview of all of the basics, I highly recommend I the Crafters class, Intro to Polymer Clay Sculpting for Absolute Beginners. This is one of the classes I watched to brush up on my skills for this video. This class walks you through all the basic ins and outs of polymer clay sculpting, like different tools and materials you might need, how different varieties of polymer clay compare, and key clay working techniques like smoothing, texturing, and shaping. If you want a little bit more in-depth instruction on texturing and painting sculptures, you can check out any of Stephanie Kilgas sculpting classes. I am obviously particularly fond of her classes on sculpting little critters like butterflies and frogs and owls. They are a great simple subject matter to start with if you've never tackled sculpting before. All the classes that I mentioned here are for all levels, so whether you're a complete beginner or a little bit more advanced, there's still plenty to learn. So whether you want to learn the basics of watercolor painting or learn how to start your own creative business, Skillshare has the classes to take you from a beginner to a pro alongside a supportive community. And if you're looking for ways to level up in your creative career or start a new side hustle, Skillshare has classes in freelancing, entrepreneurship, marketing, social media, UI, UX design, productivity, and anything else you can think of to help you run your business. So if any of that sounds enticing to your creative little brain, well, you can actually take some of those classes for free because the first 1,000 people to sign up using the link in my description will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much as always to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get sculpting! Hello there. It's day two. It's sculpting day. Can you tell by how serious I look with my light blocking glasses on? I'm trying to take care of my vision for once. Anyways, the goals for today are just to get the bases of all of the pieces done. Hopefully I can get to all the detailing. Like ideally, I want to get all of the sculpting done for these, but it's been a while since I've sculpted, so I really don't know how fast I am. If all goes well, hopefully I can bake this in the early morning hours tomorrow morning so that the oven doesn't turn my house into the Overlook Hotel at the end of Dr. Sleep. It already feels like death. There's a heat advisory every single day right now so that doesn't need to happen to the cave family picture okay so i am intimidated the too much gene is showing as usual but anyways i think i'm gonna start on the luna bunny can you, you better stand up Stit. this intimidates me the least this seems 
palatable. For this, I am going to be using Super Sculpey Medium, mostly because that's what I could find on Amazon that wasn't sold out. I have a collection of little tiny silicone sculpting tools that are going to assist me with this. And like I said, while I do this, I also have to figure out electronics. <sighs> Smart ideas coming from me this week. Let's do it. My general strategy for sculpting these was to first cover the armature in a base layer of clay, making sure to bulk up any areas where there would be important musculature or fur, and work from least detailed to most detailed. Anything that was super delicate, like ears and tails, I would sculpt separately and then add to the figure so that I wouldn't bump it while I was moving the sculpture around. And for really small details like the face, I would roll out tiny balls, balls. of clay and blend them in with my silicone tools, and I also used these to carve out the nose and mouth. I used my sharpest tool to create little sinkholes so that I could add some glass beads for the eyes which were then encased with a clay spaghetti noodle and blended out to make the socket look more realistic. I then used the pointy silicone end to create fur texture on the face and used a combo of clay tools like my X-Acto knife, silicone tool, and ball tool to form some fur on the body. I really like sculpting things with a fur because of how forgiving it is, because the base texture doesn't have to be very precise. It can look like trash. You'll just mess it up anyways by cutting it with a knife. Speaking of knives, for the little toes, I just made three notches with my knife and blended and deepened those and then proceeded to sculpt some pretty darn canine looking legs because I don't know how the heck to sculpt rabbit anatomy. I added some boniness around the joints to make it look like I knew what I was doing and added some toes using the same slicey method. Then added some beans, beans for good measure. I know they look like dog beans. What do you want from me? I was a Balto kid. I then bashed in some more fur texture and added some fuzziness on the legs because it's a moth bunny after all. For the capelet, I rolled out a pizza crust of clay and patterned it the same way I would a fabric capelet. And now that my bunny was nice and warm, I figured I would add on the ears and tail in a bad time lapse because I forgot I had the time lapse mode on. Sorry. Okay, so here's the thing. I was gonna wait until tomorrow morning to bake this, but it looks so delicate and fragile, and I really like how it came out. I don't want anything to happen to it, so I'm gonna go ahead, bake it now. Now observe the creature as she moves nervously throughout her kitchen, careful not to upset the delicate balance of her creation. Baking complete. Okay, so because I want to try, emphasis on try, to have a little rabbit in this sort of running pose, I'm worried about this clay being a little bit too heavy for the moth wings, so I think I'm going to attempt to sculpt the wings with foam clay instead, just so that they're a little bit more lightweight. Let's give this a try. <laughs> Literal marshmallow fluff. Now, folks, I bring you my best rendition of indecisiveness, the human. Okay, so this isn't really the level of quality that I want to go for, so we're back to pulling more clay. But hey, there we go. Turns out actual Sculpey was the right choice. Oh, well, nope. Uh, that looks terrible. We're going back to foam clay. This time I used craft foam as a base instead of the wire armature, and that worked out a lot better. Still kind of looks like pizza dough because foam clay looks like pizza dough, but you know what? It does the job. Okay, the Luna Bunny sculpt is done, which is good. What's less good is that that took me about four hours, so my goal of getting all of the main sculpts done today is looking a little bit unrealistic, but you know what? That's okay. Getting one of these done in like three to four hours is not a terrible time for a sculpture. If you're asking me, why are you doing four of these in a week? Isn't that a little excessive? I counter your argument with, listen, I'm a little excessive. I think next I'm going to work on our little fox friend because I foresee this one both being a little bit easier because I do know canine anatomy pretty well and a little bit harder just because I have to sculpt nine foxtails. Not necessarily looking forward to that, but I think it's gonna turn out super cute. Wish me luck. I have high hopes for this little fellow. Let's do it.
love this. I love this so much. This is one of the best things I've ever made. Oh my god, yes! This is so cute! Making pizza. I enjoy making actual clothing. Well, it turns out that I also really enjoy making clothing out of clay. There's something so satisfying about this. Oh my god. Uh, oh, that is delightful. I sound insane. All right, obviously this little fox still needs tails and anything like that that's going to be a lot of bulky clay, I'm gonna try to do with foam clay because even though that moth kind of went in some weird directions. I think the foam clay was still the best choice for that. Hopefully I can get as much detail with those as I can with the Sculpey. We're gonna give it a shot and then I think that is probably all I'm going to be able to get done for today. Just with all the detail that I've been putting in, I think doing two today and then two tomorrow and then painting the third day is going to be the most realistic. Anyways, these are coming out good, so I'm fine with it taking longer. Let's sculpt nine foxtails. This is my job, it's weird. <laughs> Hello, welcome to day three. The goals for today are to finish up the frog and the magpie designs and then get started on all of the electronics because I anticipate that being something that's, it's, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. I really don't know how I'm going to hide all of the wires, especially in all of the electronics where it's like a little lantern or something. But before we focus on that, we gotta get sculpting progress. Today I'm going to start on our little frog man here. I have never really sculpted or even really drawn a frog before. I don't know what I'm doing, so he's probably going to need the most time and attention. The Super Sculpey Medium is really, really good at holding fine detail, but it is extremely brittle. It doesn't have any flexibility whatsoever. So all of these tiny little thin pieces, ah, very prone to breaking. I'm so nervous just touching these right now. Obviously something like Cosclay would have been a better choice because it has a lot more flexibility to it and it also has the ability to hold that like finer detail but I hadn't taken that Skillshare class yet whenever I ordered this so I didn't know that. Folks, it's frog time and while I engage in some frog time I'm gonna watch a certain little autumnal cartoon that you guys probably know what I'm talking about. I'm excited. Frog time. Frog time. Hello, I thought I'd give you a quick update while I have a pickle break. Refreshing. So I am completely done with our frog friend. That took a while, but to be fair, there's a lot of little details going on, so that's okay. I love him so far. Anyways, all that is left for today 
is the magpie, which I am a little nervous about because I am terrible at drawing wings. So I kind of figure that I'll also be terrible at sculpting wings. The downside is it is already 6 p.m. Yikes, right? I'm just gonna have at it and do good enough. Come on, friends, bird time. Mysterious baby. Wow, you look so spooky right now. Okay, maybe not so much anymore. Good producer. If you've noticed me being unexpectedly quiet during these sculpting sessions, it's because honestly, I don't really have much to say about this. The techniques are more or less the same as the Luna Bunny and I didn't really struggle that much. Apparently my sculpting skills haven't really degraded that much over the years. And besides trying to cram four of these into a week, there wasn't any ridiculous or unexpected challenge to sculpting these. It actually went pretty smoothly. And that being said, I did learn a lot during the process of sculpting these. That was honestly another one of my motivations for wanting to do multiple sculptures. I just wanted to like really dive back into this whole process, really challenge myself, see where my skill level is since I haven't sculpted for a couple of years. I feel like I pick up so much by osmosis from just watching other YouTube channels. I literally learned how to sculpt clothes by watching North of the Borders videos. It's just my visual learner brain kicking in. I don't know how to do something and then I watch someone else do it. And I'm like, oh, that's how you do it. So if you are completely new to sculpting and you want to get into it a little bit more, I highly recommend all the channels that I mentioned in this video. I'll also try to link them in the description. Ma'am, this is not super helpful. Somebody is very curious. Okie dokie, we're getting a little too curious. That's where you need to be. something. All right, so much like our fox friend, I think if I do the wings with polymer clay, it's gonna throw the balance off and it's just gonna be too heavy. Also, I don't think I even have enough left. So this little fella, I'm gonna go ahead and bake him and then do the wings with my trusty foam clay. <sighs> We're getting there, guys. Wow, I look great. I've had a respirator on for about the last three hours. My nose bridge hurts. Ow. So as you can probably guess, last night sculpting the wings took me longer than I expected, but that's mostly because since the kind of foam clay that I have doesn't really blend into itself super well, I ended up just putting on tiny little individual feathers of foam clay by hand. Uh, so yeah, that took me probably like, I don't know, three hours. Absolutely brilliant, but considering I kind of suck at drawing wings and, you know, making wings, it didn't turn out too bad. As you might notice, it's already the afternoon, but I have been hard at work. Whenever I got started this morning, I first went in with my wood burning tool and just added a little bit more detail to those wings on the magpie sculpture. I also went and drilled some holes in a couple of my sculptures and on the wood blocks that I'm going to attach them to off camera. It means that my magpie sculpture can kind of stand up. Luna Bunny is also in the pose that I wanted it to be in, so... I'm really glad that that worked out. And since then, I have just been wiring all of the LEDs. I intended to do that yesterday, but I forgot how freaking long that takes, especially whenever you have really specific circuits that you want to do. No, not all of them have light sources. I did wire an LED circuit for each one. These two single LEDs are from my little lantern. So cute. They look really good whenever you turn them on. And I have one 
three LED set that's going to be for the magpie. I'm thinking I'm gonna make these look like little gemstones. And then I have another little three LED set that's gonna be for the Luna Bunny. I think that I am going to hide this under some fake clouds and kind of make it look like it's glowing. That is why these are kind of spread out in a weird way. That way they get some good spacing underneath the clouds. I've also given everyone a base layer of primer paint. I'm just using priming spray paint because I still don't have an airbrush yet. It's one of the many purchases that I keep putting off because I don't like spending money. So since I don't have an airbrush, as you could probably guess, I had to be really careful whenever I was applying this primer to make sure that I didn't like fill up the little tiny details and crevices with priming paint. That's the one bad thing about using spray paint with something like this. The consistency is like maybe a little bit too thick and can dilute some of the detail, but I think it went okay. I'm not gonna push it anymore because I don't wanna ruin these. I have spent too many hours of my life on this, so. Prep work like this sometimes takes forever, but this is supposed to be detail painting day. For once, I do expect that this is going to take literally forever. Don't know if I'm gonna get it all the way done today. I'm gonna try to just do as much as I can. I can always do a little bit more later if I need to. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be okay. We're trying to learn to accept whenever things are not perfect, even though, you know, I can probably make it better, but just like calm down a little bit. Anyways, I'm gonna grab some lunch and then settle into my den for a well-deserved painting session. I'll probably explain what I'm doing too, maybe, if you guys care. Let's do it. As always, a special thank you goes to all of my patrons who play a big part in making my content possible. Thank you, patrons. That painting for the nine-tailed fox witch is now done, and um, ignore the fact that it is obviously a different day. Next, we're going to work on our little frog man here. But um, as I was working on this stuff, I was just thinking about how this is kind of, once again, the natural progression of my content. I think that starting on costuming and sewing my own clothes was like full on a natural development of my content from like character design, but I also think that this is also that. I just have been kind of on a kick of taking my visual art, bringing it into the physical realm, and I really enjoy sculpting for that. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like, do you guys like this content? Do you guys want more of this content? Because I kind of want to make more of this content. Anyways, <laughs> enough stalling. Let's finish painting these guys up. So to finish up the painting process, I found my best frog reference and got underway. The painting process for these was pretty straightforward, but each figure did have its challenges. Since the primer I had lying around was a glossier finish, it took about two base coats of acrylic to cover that, which was particularly frustrating on the sculptures that had fur, since I had to stipple in all the grooves between the fur. Luckily, this frog man didn't have that issue. And since the surface of this frog man was so smooth, I I did struggle with rubbing those two layers of base paint away while doing washes or heavy blending. When doing the lighter mouth and underbelly of the frog, I had to wait until it was mostly dry between layers, but still wet enough to wet blend. Thankfully, all the spots were super easy and quite satisfying, and so was giving them a lighter green border per my reference. The clothing details were also a lot of fun. Once again, it took two layers of base paint, and then I could paint on all of the details like patterns and gradients. It's 
And then I could finish it up with some dry brushing in lighter browns and a more subtle metallic bronze. I think I also got a little extra carried away with the accessories and details on this one. His adorable little lantern got a bronze dry brush, and I played around with adding a drippy water effect to his lily pad umbrella by adding droplets of hot glue and carefully letting them drip as they dry. I also did the same to the lily pad he's sitting on, which I now just want to make more of so that I can use them as coasters, and I also gave him a bit of green in his pipe. Nice. Our bird friend was much of the same, he got a couple of layers of weight on his wings as a base, and then a few wet blended layers of blue on his magpie wings, followed by a lighter blue tri brush to really make the individual feathers pop. His clothes and little knives got multiple layers of paint, followed by a lot of dry brushing to bring all of those details back out, and I also did a lot of dry brushing with metallic silvers and bronzes to make him a bit more vibrant since his base colors are a little bit darker. All of the lights then got a dark blue-black wash to make the feathers pop, and the tips of the feathers were dry brushed again with a bright white and a bright blue to bring the details out again. Then I detailed the heck out of everything and got a little too excited about the prospect of a bird holding a sharp object. Knife bird! Knife oh, I also glued these little book corners on for the sake of being extra, and finally glued on the hat. I saved our Luna bunny for last because I knew it would be the simplest paint job. The wings just got a wash of red brown followed by some blue tones, and I did the same for the bunny itself. I also added in some pink tones around the ears, nose, tummy, and paw pads to make it look even more adorable. I then painted in the Luna moth details and painted the capelet a bright yellow, painted the eyes and nose, and added a couple of celestial details onto the capelet. And with that, painting is all done, which means it's time for a satin glaze. Please. Dang it, I want donuts now. And with that, our group of whimsical little critters are finished, and I think it's time for them to go on a quest. Hi there. Look at my kids. Look at them. The amount of stupid, ridiculous joy doing this has brought me is uncontainable. I had a good time. <laughs> 
I really like them. <laughs> oh, you guys are gonna be seeing a lot more of this. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here with me. Thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are the best. Um, and I especially want to send a big old warm hug to my executive producers. I hope you guys enjoyed me spamming the Patreon with photos of these guys whenever I was working on them. I got really excited. Anyways, being the bread. I hang out with cats at parties. Bobo McFoe, Freya Wolf, Gravity Drop, Sweet Winter Garden, Katie, Hypnos, India Gloom, Enozine, Megan Penland, Meeks Hunter, Eloquent Silence, Low Visa, Thea Maia, Agent Dot Sketchy, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Shay Lee, Zyle S, Dodo, Cat, Small Underscore Creeper, Francesca Sliwa, Freedom and Gus Gus, Sam Alama Ding Dong, Rose Kofrick, Rose Jaconi, Phoenix, Brian, The Cat Bus is Early, and Miss Wicked. I think that's how you say that. Fun fact, there was a point whenever I was getting that b-roll footage where there were like eight mosquitoes on me at once and it's just miserable. I'm not a juicy, delicious snack. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Just, oh, there's another one.